My name is Donald Jackie Hingson. I'm a visual artist here in Trinidad and Tobago. The name Jackie is, of course, a nickname that came from my childhood days when my mother, in an attempt to look after me as a toddler, found it necessary to place me in a big cardboard box for safety. And someone amusingly observed, he's a jack-in-the-box. As a primary school student, all around age 11, like so many others, I began drawing from comic books, characters, cowboys, things like that. As the years went by to early teens, whereas all the other children stopped expressing themselves that way, I felt the urge to continue. But the drive was there and I simply continued. So life and everything that I see and experience is inspiration. When I and my brothers traveled with my father, who was a, a traveling officer to coconut estates and so on, we looked out at scenery all the time. And I think that early experience of looking out at the landscape and seascape etched itself in my mind, in my young mind so deeply that I was predisposed after that to want to paint outdoors landscape. This scene in Swallows is an example of that, where I work plein air outside, looking directly at nature, trying to capture the light of the place, preferably of ordinary things. And again, as a child, on Juve morning, seeing Red Army come up Sackville Street to turn into Richmond Street, and just experiencing that drama of the steel band coming out of the darkness, left a deep impression on me, and again, predisposed me to wanting to see and experience pan and pan yards. A few years later, as a young teenager on Tragreed Road, when I stood outside on the pavement and looked into Invader's pan yard with the breadfruit tree, the galvanized, the dirt yard, because in those days, passers-by like me were not allowed to enter. You didn't enter a pan yard. You kept a respectful distance. And since then, for my entire life, up to now, I go to pan yards, I draw, I sketch, I paint, and so on. It's to say, if you look at the history of mankind, that societies and peoples have always kept their art in places like museums and so on. Obviously, there's some, you know, inner psychological need to have a sense of who you are, where you have come from, something to feel proud about, something that can bring you a reality about yourself and perhaps make you a better person for that. I will do what I've been doing for over 60 years now, continue producing art. The thing is, is that I work in various media and so on. At the moment, I have been working for a few years on murals based on my observation of my society, my political realities, and so on. That will continue. In between, if I find myself in the savannah, or on the north coast, or in Tobago, or up the islands, I will paint directly in nature and celebrate our light, and so on. If I'm in the pan yards, I have my sketch pad, I'll be sketching, doctor's office, bank, wherever. That just simply continues before an artist begins a work, he knows he's going to fail. The reason being is that this vision that you have, this vague thing you have in your mind called a vision about life, world, and so on, is not a precise thing that you can put your finger and identify. So there you go into using visual components, color, rhythm, tone, shape, and so on, trying to find it. But you never get it exact. So it's, I, I tell students this anytime they ask me about wanting to be artists. I say, be prepared to, to give yourself off out to a lifetime of work that never ends. To the general public, I say, you know, happy Republic Day. What I particularly like 
is that I am in charge of everything I do. I am answerable for everything I create. I can blame no one. And it's a constantly evolving thing that has no end, no high point. Gold medal podium.